It's not often that you can sort of say, this person needs no introduction, uh, but this is one of those rare occasions. Uh, ever been called a rock icon? Um, well, a lot of things that I get called have the word rock in front of them, which is always, to me, pretty absurd because rock is not what I do. You know, I come from an acoustic music background, both as a listener and as a, as a player. But yeah, usually rock something or other. But uh, Icon is, um, you know, is, is very lofty, very grand, and thank you very much for well, it's that. It's funny. Ian Anderson, the Icon. I, I mean, it is interesting what you said because you've been hugely commercially successful, if I may say so, with music that on paper people would not think as remotely commercial, would they? That, that's absolutely true. And, and, and looking back at what is now 40 years, um, that's the thing that, if, if you like, is the legacy that's worth anything, is a, a little reminder to people perhaps starting up today that once in a while you can actually make it work without pandering to the uh, requirements, commercially speaking, of record companies and agents and managers and producers and so on. You can actually just do what you really want to do. And you know, once in a while somebody gets lucky and makes it stick. And, and, and it is an extraordinarily uncommercial body of, of work which... Um, somehow has found its way into the hearts um, and the minds because some of it's a little bit more than just tinsely pop stuff um, of, of, of a, what I guess now is three generations of people so it's, it's, I feel quite good about it but you know it, when it comes down to the standing on one leg and the you know puffing away at the flute and all the kind of obvious uh, the more iconic images of Jethro Tull then it can get a little tedious on a bad day but um, you know you live with it.